You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to call in, if you'd like to participate in the show, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. New callers go directly to the front of the line. Um, We do have some new callers. By the way, first of all, if you're watching this and you cannot hear me, please let me know in the comments section. I did an hour-long broadcast not too long ago doing Packernet After Dark. I did all the calls, and then I finished, and then I went to upload it and realized there was no audio because nobody told me that there was no audio. So if you don't hear me, do me a favor and let me know. Just just be a pal, will you? That'd be great. Um, <clears throat> also, as you'll hear, uh, Jersey Mike, because I've already done these calls, uh, called in and uh, asked me to please not put phone numbers on the screen. I, uh, I t- explicitly looked to make sure that it was okay. I'm like, yeah, it's got my number. It's got their name. We're good. Completely missed that your number was right underneath there. So I apologize. Hopefully you're not getting stalked at this point. Uh, if that's the case, I apologize. The number... 608-501-0718. Why don't we get started with new callers? I have no idea what in the world is going on here, but new caller number one, who I'm not going to give a name, what's going on? Billy, Billy, Billy. Yeah. So that's what you signed up for, folks. Yep, there he goes. Billy, science guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I could call him Bill Nye the Science Guy. I'm just worried that if we do like a live call, and the reason I want to have people's names is if we ever did a live call in show where I actually took calls when they called in, I want to be like, okay, I put this guy's name down so I know he's legit. This guy called in when I was doing the live stream. It could be some, uh, you know, Bears fan who wants to call in, drop a hard R sometime or whatever. So we got to get to know him a little bit. But new caller number two, what's going on? Hey, question for you. If you had your choice, would you, and, you ha- and you're going to do a trade, would you move up or move back? And if so, where would you do it? Thank you for uh, listening. So the benefit of this also is because my uh, memory is so trash, I don't even remember what the calls were. So that one actually did take me by surprise there for a minute. By the way, please, anybody in the world, leave a comment. Just let me know that you can hear me. That'd be great. So I don't have to spend another hour doing this for no reason. So it's it's obviously impossible to answer the question because I have no idea who's going to be available or or whatever the case may be. I'll say this, though. I have a hard time. I do have a hard time moving up Um, just because whatever the scenario, I could think of a better one. Uh, And I don't necessarily mean better in a vacuum. Pedro, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, We got your call coming up next, actually. Um, so, I mean, if we just run through this, what, what options do we have? We got Brian Thomas. Um, that's about it for wide receivers. I, I, I don't necessarily at this point feel in love with that compared to, you know, again, if I have to tr- trade back and get a wide receiver, you got like Troy Franklin sitting right there, Adonai Mitchell. It's just not worth it for me. If I'm moving up for a corner is probably the best argument because you got kool-aid you got cooper you got nate wiggins but again i'm a, I'm a rake straw fan so i mean if you're talking about in giving up value whatever that would cost third round pick let's not say third because some people want us to get rid of those anyways let's say we have to give up a fourth round pick and get kool-aid compared to trading back getting a fourth round pick and then getting rake straw i would definitely rather go back and get rake straw um and then defensive tackle is also tough because these are the two guys I really like. But again, I mean, just based on do I even want to do that, 
So if you're forcing me to trade up or trade back, I mean, I, I generally speaking want to take the value. I mean, if we can trade back and get another second or something and get some of the, some of these guys, uh, third round, fourth round, whatever, I'd probably rather do that. But I mean, there are some studs, and if we end up trading up and I see you know Cooper DeGene, I see Nate Wiggins, I see Quinion Mitchell, I see Byron Murphy or whatever, um, I'm going to be jumping up and down. I'm going to be excited about it. So I'm going to say trade back for those reasons, but. Um, you know, I, I, again, a, a lot of really good guys right in this range. Pedro says, is there a player that if he falls to, let's say, between 15 and 20 issue, you would trade up to get? <clears throat> That's tough. Um, I fell out of love with Quinion a little bit. I think he's going to jump into everybody's hearts after the combine because he's about to light that up like a lot of guys are. But, um, I mean... You're probably looking at like a tackle if Fashanu or something falls that far. I know a lot of people aren't interested in a tackle, but that would be a situation. I don't think there's anything realistic else that could happen. And again, there's a lot of guys I like, but I mean, if, if you know, the edge rushers, I like the guys that are supposedly already going to be there. Maybe Fawaga would be another one, but he's kind of already in that range. Um, Otherwise, you're kind of looking at these corners would be, I mean, you got Mitchell, you got Wiggins, you got DeGene, you got McKinstry sitting in there. I think that would kind of make sense based on the value. Again, I like Rake Straw, but these guys are, are phenomenal corners. But um, all right, that's it for new callers. Let's get to Pedro. I think this is where we left off last time. Hey, Ryan. It's me again. You're going ahead from Brazil. So I, I know I just called, but I still have a lot to talk about. And I was thinking about a draft, a package draft now at the Bears. So uh, I, I'm seeing a good portion of the, the fan base talking about drafting a defensive tackle at the first round because we need one and da 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 da, da. But I don't know if I agree. Um, if we were still on a 3-4 defense on 100% of them, we do need that nose tackle and... We, we could improve that, but at a 4 3 defense, uh, I don't know. We have like three pretty good defensive tackles, in my opinion. We have Wyatt, who has a lot of potential and is pretty good pushing the passer. We have Kenny, um, that it's not a top tier defensive tackle, but he is pretty good, and I, I do think that uh, our thing base is underestimating him, and we have Carl Borgs that had a pretty good rookie season, and I do think that he can improve. So, I don't know if we need another top tier defensive tackle right now. So, yeah, I, I think that on the first round, we should really focus on our secondary and our offensive line, and I do think that we're going to do that. I would be shocked at if it was the first round we didn't draft a offensive lineman or a secondary player. But it does shock me every single draft. So, yeah, everything can happen. But, yeah. So, talking about needs, if you had to list them, I want to know what's your opinion. And my opinion is safety, um, I don't know, actually offensive tackle, safety, um, corner or linebacker, and then linebacker or corner. I think that that's our these are the top needs for the Packers, and what I hope they draft that days one and two. So yeah, let me know what you think, and talk to you soon. Bye bye. So first of all, with the defensive tackle discussion, I mean, all things staying exactly as they are, I tend to agree. We got five guys. We got Kenny Clark, TJ Slayton, Devontae Wyatt, Colby Wooden, and Carl Brooks rotating in and out of um, five spots, right? We also got Jonathan Ford and Odomegwu technically, and we'll see if they can ever uh, take any steps or whatnot. But, and also, like you said, not early. So we could also get, you know, fifth round, sixth round, seventh round, maybe throw it, find another Carl Brooks or Colby Wooden or whatever and, and – and, you know, add that way if you felt needed to. I guess the only thing to consider is, you know, first of all, again, you draft based on need and you see how things unfold, things change over time. But the, the questions I have are, number one, how long-term is Kenny Clark? He's in the final year of his contract. So, I mean, if he's out the door soon, that's thinning out, especially if you look at TJ Slayton, 
who's also in the final year of his contract, and I don't know if he's necessarily a good fit for this team. So you're looking at, you know, possibly next year not having Slayton or Kenny Clark, and now you just got Wyatt, Carl Brooks, and Colby Wooden. And I, I kind of like Brooks and Wooden, but I don't know 100%. We don't know what we have in them. Do we have studs? Do we have kind of okay guys? Do we have whatever? Um, so I, I, I think a d- defensive tackle could potentially be a pretty big need if we're not keeping those guys. And then the other question I had is, is it possible that Brooks and or Wooden could be slotted back outside? So if let's just say one of the two goes to the outside, let's, I don't know, Carl Brooks or something goes to the outside. Now it's just Wyatt and Wooden with Slayton and Kenny in their last years. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Now I'm not saying Kenny and Slayton aren't coming back. I'm, I'm just trying to kind of broaden out the, the thought process here. As far as needs, which again, I've done this already, and I know I stumbled over it last time because it's tough. Um... It's partly tough because I don't know, you know, I mean, you'd have to tell me, is Savage coming back? Is Rudy Ford coming back? Is Jonathan Owens coming back? If not, it's hard to not say safety because right now we're looking at a safety group that's Anthony Johnson and Benny Sapp. That's our safety group, you know, Um, with uh, the Zaniac, Zane Anderson, along with him. Um, So that's a huge need. Uh, Corner, potentially. Stokes is in his final year. I don't know what's going on with that. Um valentine is a rookie valentine i like valentine but he's not he's not it you know um so i mean we got jair and what so secondary is huge um linebacker i don't know i mean you know isaiah mcduffie is in his final year maybe we bring back eric wilson if we do and there's and there's no problems with devondre then we got quay mcduffie wilson and campbell and i think we're okay but you know, if we don't bring back Wilson and Isaiah McDuffie isn't long term, it's like, well, we got two guys with Campbell potentially leaving at some point. I don't really know. Uh, and we need three linebackers plus depth. So that kind of challenges that. Uh, Edge, you know, I, I think Edge is okay for the most part, but I don't know the plan for Preston. I don't know if Kingsley can do the job from where he's at. And so now you're looking at just Rashawn and Van Ness with Brenton Cox. You know, and obviously I have no idea what he can do. So a lot of it is just kind of seeing how the thing, how how the dust settles. But at the end of the day, you're clearly looking at defense, right? I mean, wide receiver, we know what we have. Maybe maybe we don't know fully what the talent is, but it's just a bunch of young guys that we like and we trust, and they're young and they're not going anywhere. Tight end is the same thing. Quarterback is the same thing. Um, you know, offensive line, I think we need some stuff. You know, on the interior, potentially need a tackle. I know that's blasphemous. Um, from two different ends, the people that believe David Bakhtiari is coming back and the people that believe that Rashid Walker is David Bakhtiari. I'm not in either of those camps. Um, and then running back would be the other one. Dylan is currently a free agent. I don't know if he's coming back. I tend to think he is, but I don't know. And Aaron Jones, I mean, we're probably going to have to go to him again and ask for a pay cut. And if he doesn't take it, what do we do? He's in the final year of his deal. Uh, do we just pay it and then we uh, let him walk next year? Or, or what do we do? I don't know. So offensively, it's it's running back and interior because the interior is Elton Jenkins, who we like, Royce and Myers are in their final years, and John Runyon. So I I, I know I didn't really answer your question. I'm kind of skirting around it, um, but like I said, it, it it depends kind of what we have. Just looking at it as is. I mean, safety is the one that you look at and just go, I don't know what we do, and uh, unless and until we bring some guys back, I don't know what we do. So I guess I'll just put that near the top. Um, all right. Jesse from Oregon, what's going on? Hello, Ryan. Hope you're well. Um, I just uh, wanted to get your thoughts on, uh, uh, I know we have a lot of draft picks and we talk about, you know, uh, building to the draft. And I think uh, that's all, um, I mean, I think that's great. And the fact that our our sustained success is built on that. I'm all for it. The the only thing is uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, bringing in Xavier McKinney. Um, I know some of the other podcasts I've already talked about. Uh, I know it's going to be pricey um, for safety, but uh, he's young. He plays the same high role, and he's been very good at it and a very, very good tackler. And I think that if you get that down, then, then you're not chasing it in the draft. 
it might be worth the pay. Because um, I think a great safety kind of uh, is worth the money. Uh, another thing is uh, I'm wondering what you would think about bringing Jeff Okuda in, not because he's been great in the league, obviously, but the fact is that uh, the last time that he had the halfway as a coach, he ended up becoming a third overall pick. And uh, what would a contract for him, uh, whether it be a one year or three year or something, would a contract for him look like? What do you think you'd be okay with? Or would this just be something you would be completely uh, against, him, seeing as he has not played well in the league? Anyways, uh, thank you. Uh, that was great. Uh, well, hey, I can whatever. So I, I, I love the call because I love both points. Um, Xavier McKinney, you're getting all the whole, you know, they're sending cryptic tweets and, um, you know, it's the, the date is closing in and whatnot. I just looked it up. He's sitting at about $14 million. I don't think that's terrible. I think that's pretty reasonable for a 25-year-old guy that's going to be on your team for a long time. I guess it's just a question of do you fully believe it, you know, because, I mean, if you look at it, it kind of, if I had to guess, would say this is kind of his range. He's more of like, this is what he really is. This is the low, this is the high, and this is what he really is. And even if you look at this, he was on track for another 70-something year, but then he he popped off. He just had a couple just stupid good games, and that really carried him up. Um, but I, either way, I'm, I'm for it. We need a guy. This is a long-term thing. I think he's proven to be the guy. Uh, like you said, really, really solid tackler, which I think is going to be good for what um, Halfley wants. You know, guys that can come up and actually make plays and affect things. Um, and then the Jeff Okuda thing I love. Um, I mean, maybe he's just done. He's also 25 years old. Jeff Okuda might just be cooked. He just doesn't have it. I don't know. But the last time anybody saw this guy doing anything productive was um, at Ohio State when Halfley was his coach. And uh, maybe it's just scheme. Maybe it's just the way in which they play. But, I mean, if we can bring him to Green Bay, and, and I'm talking pennies, right? I mean, he, he basically is not getting anything. He's been terrible at corner for four years. Three years in Detroit, he was the number three overall pick. He didn't even make it four years. Detroit offloaded him before his fourth year. Atlanta brought him in. He was terrible. He got a, a 50 PFF grade, a 46 coverage grade. Um Gave up 494 yards, 92.3, zero interceptions, whatever. Just, I mean, not, he had one good game, and that was week four against Jacksonville. But, I mean, if he's not going to cost anything, you bring in a guy that has sky-high potential, and you say, hey, dude, remember what we did at Ohio State? Come do that here. And, and you can help to integrate. Like, it, it's going to be easy to teach. He knows how to do it. He knows how to run it. What's, what, what's the downside? What's the downside if it doesn't cost very much? I mean, bring him in. See if he'll come in on a one-year contract or a two-year contract or something. I mean, who cares? Um, I think that's fantastic. I, I would love to do that. Uh, you know, it's it's similar to what I said about Jordan Love back when we picked him up. Like, if, if this guy's going to succeed anywhere, it's in Green Bay. If Jeff Okuda has anything at all, if, if there's any chance of him being the guy that the NFL expected him to be, it's going to be with the Green Bay Packers. And why wouldn't he come here? The guy wants to get paid. He needs to play better. Where else is he going to play better? Here. I would be ba- I'd be on the phone. If I'm him, I'd be calling up Halfley like, please give me a one-year contract, minimum salary contract. Let me come in and prove it. Let me show everybody what, what, what can happen. And I'm going to tear it up, and then you guys, I'll stay with you, and you can pay me, and I'll get, I'll get the big contract. I'm in. I think that would be uh, pretty fantastic. Jeff would bring the best out of Jeff. Yeah, I, I think so. Says too old for this. And and maybe the best is not. Maybe Jeff Okuda just can't do it. I don't know. But we'll find out. It's not going to cost us anything. And we can offload him if it doesn't work. But imagine if it does. I mean, Jeff Okuda was taken number three overall, was considered one of the best corner prospects to come out of college football in, I don't know, a freaking decade if you can even get 80%, 75% of what he was expected to bring to the NFL, we've got a great corner. So, yeah, I uh, I love that, man. Uh, how long have we been going here? Why don't we go ahead? We'll take our first break. We'll come back and hear from Blake in Michigan. 
Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Hey, Ryan, this is Blake from Michigan. Um, It is the day after the Jeff Halfley press conference. I guess I've just got some thoughts. I guess you can call it a hot take. It kind of goes against this this narrative. with the new DC getting hired, uh, it obviously comes with a lot of comparisons to Joe Barry. And I'm, I guess I'm kind of sick of Joe Barry being drudged up again, which it's kind of natural to compare the old guy and the new guy. But with Joe Barry being brought up again, this whole argument of quote unquote nepotism mm-hmm. in the coaching ranks comes up, which it's naturally tied to Joe Barry start with the Lions working under Rod Marinelli, who was his father-in-law. And I think sometimes, and a lot of this is just idiots on X and idiots on Reddit kind of parroting whatever they hear. But I feel like, you know, you have people like Joe Barry that get their start that way, and then you you get hires like Halfley that have mutual friends and mutual coworkers from their past stops with Halfley working with – with Shanahan and Sala and these people in the past. And I feel like, you know, thankfully LaFleur doesn't listen to the, those criticisms, obviously, because LaFleur's not worried about the stuff that's getting, you know, parroted online. He's worried about the collaborative approach, who will work best with me um, and, you know, Basaccia and our GM and who will work best with us and who does he go by is – his mutual friends. He goes by people that he trusts, like Sala, like Shanahan. So I guess I just kind of want to speak up against the idea that, you know, every single coach that has mutual contacts uh, or who has worked or crossed paths with another coach, that doesn't necessarily make them a nepotism hire or a nepo baby or something like that. That's just how the world works. So I guess, again, if People hear this call and a few less people make that argument about networking versus nepotism. They're two totally different things. So I guess I just wanted to get that off my chest and hope nothing but the best for, uh, for Halfley and, you know, try not to get too bogged down and rack my brain on how the scheme's going to be because we've still got the draft and we've still got the whole offseason free agency, re-signing, letting guys go. I'm looking forward to all that over the coming months. Have a good one, Ryan. Thanks for listening. Bye. Yeah, and I, I kind of touched on that a little bit. And I think most people are on board with, with Halfley and, and understanding what the actual relationship is with um, Matt LaFleur, which is, is not very extensive. It's more secondhand. But, you know, I think the term is throw the baby out with the bathwater. I, I think many times we acknowledge that something is bad, and so then we take it to the extremes. Whereas, you know, as I've always said, the problem with the whole nepotism thing, from my perspective, is that it limits the pool. And so the odds of you finding the best possible candidate when you're only hiring friends and family is that, you know, you, you, you're you not operating from a full pool. And so you're unlikely to find the best possible prospect. Um, the extreme on the other side is you can't work with anybody that you're friends and family with. Well, that that also reduces the pool. I want the whole pool open. Everybody's available and you pick the best. If it happens to be a friend, if it happens to be a family member, then okay. And people are going to kick and scream and do whatever. 
But yeah, taking it to the extreme of, oh, here's another guy that he's friends with, another guy. It's like, bro, they're all, fr- they all know each other. Everybody knows everybody. So there's going to be some element of that that you got to just be okay with. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it just, and that's the thing, we don't know. We're not going to know how much of this is fueled by like, he's my buddy, it'd be cool to work with him or whatever, and how much is legitimately them doing their due diligence from finding the best possible prospect. Um but I, I think I think most people feel comfortable with it at this point. I think we all understand that they were kind of casual acquaintances more so than anything. Uh, I think everybody really likes his resume. I think they like the direction that Matt Lafleur is taking the team um, with with Halfley. I think everybody likes the fact that Halfley's choosing the uh, the coaching staff. Some people did stay, which is Halfley's at Halfley's discretion. I'm assuming, yeah, you know, um, Downard he worked with Halfley, so that must of played into it and then he brought in his own guys to be able to coach his scheme so no i but i'm i'm with you 100 percent. i mean it, nepotism is a problem but we can't just take it to the extreme where it's like oh you know him you're friends with him and you hired him you're a piece of crap and this team is gonna suck like <laughs> calm down a little bit maybe i don't know uh garrett what's going on hey thank daddy this is uh garrett from southern illinois uh i promise no uh no explicit language in this one. I was just simply re- repeating what was on the commercial. So sorry about that, dude. <laughs> really sorry. It just is kind of funny that you do get commercials like Lululemon. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm sorry, but the listeners to the acronym, I can't see anybody going and spending money at Lululemon except maybe, maybe Broccoli Tom at the most, uh, or, Let or Tom Clayton's live. wife. But, uh, <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to uh, give you an idea for when you're doing the Packernet Live, uh, if you would ask AI to do oh, some yeah. artwork generation of some of the names. Mm-hmm. I already got uh, made the from college. the last freaking So, episode. yeah, Stephen Alaska. You should ask AI to uh, generate artwork what it thinks Stephen Alaska looks like. I gotta find and uh, Jersey Mike, Omar the Firefighter. Uh, Eric the mailman, Joe the plumber. That would be an interesting one. Mm-hmm. I just think it'd be really kind of funny if we could use those artworks that are generated as uh, stuff to put up on Facebook. So, just an idea. I'm out. Man, that's going to annoy me. So, I did do that. And then, because shortly after these calls um, is when Jersey Mike scolded me about the phone numbers. And so, I took the phone numbers off. But I got to find where the pictures are. Because then I started putting those up when people called. I might just have to start over and we'll do it again. That'd be all right. It is kind of funny. It just, uh, I just did it, man. Um, All right. Well, oh, here we go. Packer fan in Alaska. That's got to be it. All right. Bonus. So here is our guy that's talking to us right now. Bam. There's Garrett from Southern Illinois. Go ahead, Garrett. Take it away. So I was really taught to uh, not only uh, if you criticize something, you need to offer a solution to that problem. And when it comes to the commercials that are played on Packernet, I thought, well, what kind of commercials are actually suited for the listeners to your podcast? And I would say I would start off with uh, you talk a lot about barbecuing, so a slaughterhouse would probably be suitable. Um, there are a lot of people that live in, good. you know, way out in the middle of nowhere, like Stephen, Alaska. So Carhartt workwear would be probably another suitable commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, since, you know, that Clayton's part of the network, I would say maybe hair mousse and uh, oversized coffee mugs. Just, just tearing everything. Uh, up for today. the most part, I feel like that that covers space. Oh, and, and janitorial supplies yep. would be another one that I feel like would be more suitable to your listener base. So maybe that'll happen. Maybe we'll just speak it into existence. We'll see what happens. I'm out. So I have done that. I've reached out to you know local Wisconsin places, barbecue places, whatever. Very little, uh, very little interest coming back at me. But um, at this point, I am exclusive through our uh our our hosting people or whatever so i can still reach out but then i gotta send them over there so it just kind of is what it is 
again, apologies for um, any awkward commercials you may be getting, but um, I don't really have the ability to refine it to the degree where I can't have Lululemon on here. And I wouldn't care. Some of the stuff that you guys were talking about that I didn't even know was being played um, was pretty repulsive, but uh, I would definitely block that if I could. I don't have the option, so I apologize. Well, and I've been listening to your podcast now since the uh, since the very beginning, and I, you know, this time of year, you know, everything kind of gets a little, little bit. There's there has been years where there's been a lot of drama, but typically, when you know, football news kind of slows down a little bit, you tend to get more calls from guys stepping it up and repeatedly hearing from them, you know. Broccoli, Thomas Austin, Shut up, and Rambo. Goose, and you know other people that have dropped off with it, which makes me wonder: uh, Did somebody cut the string to the Solo Cup uh, connecting Canada to Wisconsin? We haven't heard from Goose in a long time. I know. Uh, so I'm just uh, calling out all the listeners to uh, step it up, call in, give you some uh, quality calls rather than me repeating uh, stuff that I'm sure most people don't want to listen to, but when I'm taking my break, I got some time. So I'm here to burn some time. I'm out. Rambo says, I'm here. Can you start over? Yeah, no, and again, I've heard the call already, and it it does it does kind of, you know, as you mentioned it, like, man, we haven't heard from so-and-so in a long time. There's so many people you start going through your head, like, man, I remember this person used to call – they don't call anymore, so I hope I didn't tick anybody off. I, I, you know, I don't think try to try to be nice to people, but sometimes I'm not. I don't know, and I know it's the off season. People got stuff to do, but I mean, we miss you, me and uh, me and Garrett, and Pedro, and too old for this, and Brambo. I mean, we uh, we miss you guys, man. You guys got to call in. It just hasn't been the same without you uh here's jersey mike let me let me find jersey mike's picture here where's jersey mike that's uh steven alaska this is jersey mike supposedly all right jersey mike hey ryan it's jersey mike uh so i was having a great time listening to back on that after dark watching it on youtube right now because it'll probably be uploaded to the google podcast later um first thing i got a problem with you please please dear god don't, don't get my phone number out. I feel like people are going to start calling me. Sorry, dude. I don't know. My no, bad. no. But seriously, uh, yeah, I, I, I would I would appreciate it if you could uh, make it so that the phone numbers aren't available. Um, I don't know. There's some stalkers out there, some weird people amongst the uh, the world, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. I just saw a bunch of alpacas. That that is amazing. <laughs> I want an alpaca farm. Sorry, sidetrack. Uh, squirrel. No, but, uh, but yeah. Anyway, uh, the other thing is, I, I, I'm not I'm not fighting anybody. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm capable of it. Uh. <laughs> uh I, I live in Texas, so take that for what it's worth. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 a little bit hot headed from Jersey. We got we got that. But uh. Yeah, I'm not fighting anybody. Sorry. I I'm just not gonna do it. I mean, unless somebody starts something. Hey, 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 look, guys, 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 guys. If y'all are hanging out and we're hanging out at the draft or something like that and somebody wants to start something, you best believe I'm going to help you finish it up. But but, but we're not we're not starting no fights because it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Um. Anyway, on on a different note, um, I, I'm, I'm just... Just um, to be clear on that, I think I think that was kind of the point. You know, it was more like if it came down to it. And it's kind of like that whole my dad can beat up your dad thing. It's not like I think my dad's actually going to fight your dad. They don't even know each other. They probably won't and whatever. But it's just kind of like a, you know, it, hypothetical situation. If there was like that crew and this crew and this crew, I just feel like pound for pound, we might get the crap beat out of us based on numbers, but it'd be like a 300 thing, you know? It's like 300 of us, 3,000 of them. It's kind of an easy, uh, an even fight, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm throwing you a little credit here, Jersey Mike. I'm saying because of guys like Jersey Mike and Steve in Alaska and, uh, 
you know, we got truckers and freaking Janet. We got blue collar guys out here. I just, I just feel like we'd be all right. That's all I'm saying. I'm not asking anybody to fight anybody. I don't want to fight anybody. I like people. I, I like uh, all the other podcasters and everything. I don't have, I don't want anybody throwing, uh, throwing haymakers or anything. It was just a hypothetical that I feel like um, over here at the Packernet Podcast, we have a slightly different clientele that, uh, you know, would would be able to handle themselves pretty well. That's all. At this point. We're talking about all the position groups that we think are most important. And I'm, I'm hearing y'all talk about offensive linemen, and I understand why you are completely uh, for finding some offensive lineman pieces. And uh, I just wanted to, to talk about the two that I'm really looking for. Uh, first is Cooper Beebe. Uh, you know who he is. I, I like him as a guard. I think he's a real good prospect. I think he plugs in for Runyon. And then the other one is a uh, tackle out of uh, Mizzou. I believe his name is Devon Foster. Uh, I'll go double check later. I, I, I might be talking about the wrong guy. Uh, but Javon Foster, uh, I'm, I'm pretty positive, was his big hulking dude. I believe he plays tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think he could be moved inside and play hard because I think he's a little slower. But, man, when you talk about run blocking, I was watching some tape of the running back out of Missouri, and I just kept seeing these big holes opened up because his mauling run blocker was over there, and it was this tackle, Javon Foster, and and that's so. So if we're gonna get some guys, I don't I don't like any of the uh, first round talent, second round talent. Uh, Cooper BB might be second round talent, I like but but those are my guys. Anyway, go pack go. Yeah, so Mr. Javon Foster, where's he at, by the way? 136, so he's kind of in that range, you know, when we usually hit on guys, maybe get him in the fourth round or something. Um, but you're not lying, man. I mean, he he really picked up the pass blocking. He's just a good – he's just one of those well-rounded guys that we're not going to draft because he blocks too well at uh, run blocking. 320-pound um, freaking mauler, man. I, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be super excited. Looks like he's played left and right tackle. No idea if – if they'd well, actually, you know what? I feel like they wanted to kick him inside. I, I'm, I don't know why. Maybe it wasn't him. I, I know there was a guy I looked at recently. He was six foot five, and everybody was like, "No, he's a guard." Probably, probably the whole like short arm thing. I don't know. Either way, I mean, look, I'm not mad about it. If you get a guy like this at six foot five, has that tackle, you know, ability, the 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 athleticism or whatever, but he's a freaking mauling moose that happens to be really good run blocking and pass blocking and he's our new runyon at, at right guard i don't know man i uh i'm not gonna be mad about that i don't think so much uh kyle from madison where's your picture man ryan kyle from madison what's man up? what's up so i'm just listening to your packer net live kyle here from and you're actually replying to one of my questions you're talking about the vikings quarterback kyle situation. From madison? and as you're going through have the kyle options from madison. i had the unfortunate experience oh, of putting myself in the place of a Vikings fan. And yeah, it's it's kind of a you're kind of screwed for the quarterback situation, right? And it's just kind of what do you do? You you'd have to give up way too much to get up there probably than you're willing to do. Um but you're playing just good enough to where you're you're picking lower and yeah, maybe you get the fourth best quarterback. And then I start thinking to myself, gosh, this this just them being in the division, being in that situation, just highlights the brilliance of what ended up happening with, with Love because that could have been the Packers, you know. If Rodgers was on the team this year, he right. goes down, maybe not week one, but he goes down like Cousins, and then there we are without a quarterback, you know. Have you not picked up Love? And it just underscores just how incredible that, whatever he ends up being, he just ends up being good from here on out. It's Where just, did my thing go? It's a, it's, a, it it's a crazy genius move because you just see what could be with the Vikings right now. It very easily could have been our position. So, um, thank God it's not. <laughs> also, uh, got a chance to listen to the, the new DC um, at his press conference. Yeah, you know, I understand nobody's uh, – like we haven't seen him do anything yet on the field. But I couldn't be more pleased with, you know, how he – uh, represented himself and just the way he talked, and, and I was very impressed with uh, everything he had to say. And I really came away from that just thinking that, okay, like, this guy's going to freaking manage the defense. Like, the Lafleur better not be spending more than five minutes a week in there. You know what I mean? Like, I got the sense that 
the head coach in him also was very evident. I mean, he, he definitely felt like somebody that could manage that entire side of the ball. So happy to, happy to see that. It was just, I don't know, it was nice to see that. I know like that doesn't really mean anything, but when it's February, it means a lot, I guess. <laughs> anyway, talk to you later. Yeah. Halfley knocked it out of the park, man. I mean, um, you know, Packer fans are pretty skeptical about defense in general and, um, for him to come in and get the amount of buy-in that he's getting from Packer fans is it's quite a feat. Not not on on the flip side, I suppose it would be pretty easy to get buy-in if you just say that you know you like to play man coverage and you want to be a fourth. Like if you just come in and say I'm the opposite of Joe Barry, which he pretty much is, um, I think you're gonna you're gonna get Packer fans to buy in. But no, I mean he he said all the right things. I mean again, he comes in. The first thing he does is he butters everybody up. He talks about. You know, the coach is so good. The GM is like the biggest reason he's <laughs> he's coming here. The fans, the 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 legendary team, the Green Bay Packers, and just how amazing it is and everything's so great and so wonderful and we got such great guys and he trusts that Gutekunst is gonna be able to continue to get guys to build a defense for him and and then he comes in and lays out his plan. And and again, I, I think the biggest thing with Halfley that was so cool, and I'm I'm repeating myself, but I love it. The entire premise is he's such a good teacher. And his ability to have a defense that is just simplistic, not so much in terms of like it's it's simple for an offense to pick apart, but just it's it's built to take some of the weight off the players. And that's already demonstrated because as he's talking, you're going, Oh, I get it. Like I just like I said, I feel like I know Halfley's defense better than I knew Joe Barry's at any point. So um, you know, again, it's still gotta we still gotta work our way through it. We gotta see, but um I am, in fact, a a, uh, a fan so far, and I'm I'm excited to hear more from these as, assistant coaches. I think everybody on our defense is overqualified. I just saw we went and got the other uh, Dugan, I think, the co-defensive coordinator. He's going to come in to be like an assistant. Like this guy could have come in. I thought he was going to come in and be our linebackers coach. He's coming in to be like an assist. Like, bro, everybody's overqualified. Everybody. It's unbelievable. Why don't we take our final break? We'll come back and hear once again. From Jersey Mike. Hey Ryan, this is Jersey Mike. Hey. So uh, I got a little thought experiment um, for you. Okay. Um, you know, play mock draft, roulette, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what that would consist of, actually. <laughs> uh, Sounds do, you, do you shoot yourself? Right, you I make don't know. the pick, <laughs> or if the uh, the mock draft thing gives you like a, a worse grade or something? Right. Uh, no. But if we came out of the first just three rounds, okay, and we pick these people. Okay, and I'll tell you what the consistency of the rest of the draft is. I'm not going to go over names. Okay. But you tell me what you would think. First, start off Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback okay. Alabama. I like him. Love him. Second, Peyton Wilson, linebacker, NC State. People don't agree with me. Some people do agree with me. I really think he plays a role in this defense. Sure. Anyway, we're going to keep on going. Third pick, Braylon Trice, a defender, eh, edge defender, Washington. I really didn't look too much at edge defenders, but then JJ was talking about how edge defender late in draft doesn't really look great, and uh, you know what? He's he's really right. Um, so I think we got to go a little. I, I don't know how Trice fell. I was going to go for somebody else, possibly uh, the guy out of Mizzou. Um, Trice is my dude. But no, Trice fell, and I I felt like he was a good pick here. Then we get uh, Jalen Wright, running back, Tennessee, and then we get Tavondre set. Sweat, defensive interior, Texas. So a lot of, lot of defense, mm-hmm. real early. And then for the majority of the rest of the draft, it's uh, guard, another running back, tackle. Uh, we get three more safeties, a line, and two more linebackers. So little, little offensive, defensive heavy in the back end there. Uh, really offensive line and really uh, defensive mid and backfield. Uh, that would probably be the focus. I, I mean. If if we did something like that, in my opinion, where we started off real hot, like Brian Gutekunst likes to do real early with some real key defensive pieces, right, and then get some mid-round 
studs when it comes to running back and, and guard. And and then later on, you go after some pieces for your guy, um, Jeff, our new DC. And and I think that, honestly, if, if we can come out with something like that and pick up a guy like David McKinney or a Devin White, just somebody on that back end there uh, who's a veteran, pay him a little bit, cut the, we, we cut a bunch of guys, cut the guys we don't need. I, I mean, I don't know. H- how would you feel if that was the situation? Anyway, go back go. Yeah, the hard part is trying to remember to keep that all in my head. But, I mean, just at least on the top end, I would, I'd love that. I mean, I'd, you'd have to probably switch Braylon Trice and Peyton Wilson for me just because it feels, first of all, disrespectful, and also it just kind of helps with the whole linebacker thing. But, I mean, I, 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 I would take Braylon Trice at 25. I would trade up for Braylon Trice. I, I, I'm obsessed with Braylon Trice. I think he's an absolute freak show. But, um, yeah, Kool-Aid, I love Kool-Aid McKinstry. So now we've got Kool-Aid next to Jair. We've got Braylon Trice coming in, big 275-pound, real long, real fast for his size. I, I, I love the way he plays, real strong edge rusher to get put in with the rest of the crew that we got. Then you got Peyton Wilson, which I, I, you know, I think when you think about the linebackers, and let's just make something up, I asked on social media, like, where do you think the linebackers play? And nobody could agree. But let's just say, hypothetically, Quay goes strong side. Um because I think that kind of works for him. He can blitz off the strong side. Um, I think he's you know he's a real solid tackler and whatnot. And then you can have Devondre at middle linebacker. And then you get Peyton Wilson playing weak side, just flying around making plays. He's about to light up the combine. Then you go out and get uh, the running back out of, what is it, Tennessee? I forget his name. But he's going to run probably in the four twos. Um, he's going to absolutely blow up the combine, just – beyond ridiculous straight line speed. So now, now you're turning into the Miami Dolphins. You just got stupid speed everywhere. Um, no, I, 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 it doesn't even matter the rest of it. I, I would be just laying on the floor convulsing. It would be a terrible show. You would, you would hate to even watch me uh, do the old stream for the draft because I would just be, I'd just be twitching somewhere. So I'd be super excited about something like that. Uh, too old for this says Braylon Trice, real name, no gimmicks. <laughs> Pedro says that mock looks pretty good, but I still think the one I sent you today is the template. Where was that? You sent me that on Twitter or something, or maybe you sent it to him. I don't know. Who's next? We got, oh, it's Pedro again. I get to use Pedro. Hey, picture. Ryan, it's me, Pedro, the red from Brazil, man. So, there, you are. there he is. Last Tuesday, uh, I called. Beast. Uh, about something, but uh, I, I didn't hear it on the podcast, so I apologize if you were to talk about it. But I want to talk about Bakhtiari. So um, you were talking on a pod about a possibility that the Jets try to grab him, trade for him, or whatever, but I really don't think that Bach would play for them because they play on turf. And in the division where a lot of teams use turf after all the rant that he did about that i really don't see him going to 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 a place like the jets so yeah i I wanted to know beside the jets if you think that some team could be interested uh, on trading for back or even signing him if we do could him i think that maybe the miami dolphins could use a player like him but i don't know want to hear your thoughts and yeah that's about it. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. No, I think that's exactly right, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't think about that as much as I should have. That's been his whole thing. I mean, it's it's. I mean, he could do whatever he wants, and if he's willing to take the risk, that's fine. But you know, for you to stand up that and make that like your one battle cry about you know the the, the turf conditions, and then you know as like the number one advocate for it being willing to take money to go play on that surface, it just it doesn't bode well for your argument. Um, and, and the other thing to think about is, you know, if you're David Bakhtiari, you know your time is almost up in the NFL, what do you want to do? I mean, obviously you could just take the most money. There's, there's no shame in that. But, um, you know, as I look at it, he'd want to go to the Jets, but I think that's a fair point that you could almost cross that off as a result of that. And so what else would you want to do? You'd probably want to finish out in Green Bay, unless he just really doesn't like it here, which I 
I don't think that that's the case. Maybe, maybe he's with Rogers and is all, oh, they don't treat people well here or some stupidity like that. I don't know. And he wants to go. If that's the case, fine. Have a, have a nice life, I guess. Um, but it does kind of bode well for like, if he's going to play anywhere, why not play here? So we'll see, we'll see how it pans out. Um, pretty likely that he ends up getting, uh, getting cut. And so then the question just kind of becomes, with his new contract, what's it going to be and where's it going to go, I guess. Aaron, what's going on? Hey, Ryan, this is Aaron. Um, I'm just going to give a quick call because I was listening to your podcast on Jeff Halfley's interview. And there are certain things that, like, popped up in my mind, having having, having conducted interviews myself in the past. Um, like, sorry, Jeff Halfley's press on but having conducted interviews in the past with while well, hiring people, right? There are some times where it's just like you do an interview and you're just like, how the heck did we find this person? Like, is, is, is this real life right now? And that's kind of what I'm getting from hearing Jeff Halfley's press conference is like, there's a lot of stuff that it's, that it's like he brought up unprompted as to why as to, like, a bunch of issues that Packers fans have had. And it's just, like, as you said, it's a breath of fresh air, and it's absolute, it's, it's such an incredible thing to see, to see how Jeff Halfley is. And because, like, at first, nobody knew who he was, but now so many, he's won almost all of the Packer Nation over. Um, and if, yeah. Anyways, but taking Jeff Halfley's experience, which his experience alone, just having so many different backgrounds, is incredible. Um, but then take into account his experience of like of how he looks at players, rather than saying like, "Oh, this is the player that I need to fit my scheme." Like, there's like most probably defensive coordinators and GMs and everything do. Instead of like going into this draft and free agency looking at it like how do can I you like how does this player fit my scheme or what player do I need to fit my scheme? He can go into it and see it and look it into it with his perspective of how can I use whatever player we get? He sees value in every player and he gets the best out of every player. And another thing I get I got from his interview is our press conference. He's saying interview, it's basically the same thing with a bunch of different people. But his Another thing from his press conference is, like, I knew that he had coached Revis and Sherman and some of the best DBs in the, in the league has seen. And then he just casually drops in, yeah, so when I was coaching Rondé Barber, I, was, I didn't know that he had coached Rondé Barber. And, like, if he can learn something from Rondé Barber, like, it's just everywhere we look, there, he's around some of the best cornerbacks to have ever played in this game. And he takes stuff from them. He learns from everyone around him. I. How did we get Jeff Halfley? How? I, it, hopefully, he actually lives up to everything he's done. And, and has, so, but anyways, go Pat, go. My three minutes is about to kill me. Um, so. And, and that's why I think, for me, anyways, and probably probably be a good idea for everybody. We got to kind of reset what we think we know about the defense. Um. We got to reset, you know, again, with the safeties, assuming Savage comes back, which I don't know if he is, Rudy Ford, Keyshawn Nixon, Eric Stokes, you know, like the edge guys, um, the 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 interior guys are going to be asked to do different things. They're going to have some different coaching. They're going to have different ways of playing. And so we got to kind of hit pause um, on top. You know, we'll see what they end up what they end up bringing in. And I think that might be somewhat indicative of what they think we have and, and maybe what we don't have, more importantly. But, um, you know, we, we got to relearn. I mean, Quay Walker could end up being a stud with this new thing, or or maybe it could kind of hurt him. I, I don't know. But, um, you know, I, I am excited to see what he can do. I'm excited, especially with the DBs, to see what happens when he gets his hands on these guys. And um, just see what we can cook up, because I know we got a lot of talent there. Um, uh, Jair Alexander, I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens when Jair is is – being coached up by, I mean, a really talented DB guy. Um, I'm very excited to see like what we get from guys like Wyatt, who are just going to be able to cut loose and say, just go get them. Um, so 
we'll we'll see. It's hard to make assessments right now based on on things that we don't know, and we probably just won't know for a while. But um, it's just it's fun to speculate. Once we get into the draft, we'll have a much better idea of the direction of the team. We'll have a better picture of of what we're going to be doing. I do think it's going to be pretty defensive heavy, but it it may not be. You never know. But um, yeah, so I, I I guess I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys for all your calls. Again, the phone number here is six zero eight five zero one zero seven one eight. Just call in, leave a voicemail. No big deal. We'll get to you when we get to you, but uh, I got to get out of here. I will catch you all later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.